What the hell are these supposed to mean? Are you saying you want a piece of me? Welcome to another episode of Jersey Filmmaker. I'm Anthony Saratelli, and excuse my Seinfeld reference in the intro, I'm a huge fan. Today might not be the most exciting episode because we're gonna get somewhat scientific with bit depth and color sampling. But this stuff is important to know when we get to the color correction and color grading process. So I wanted to put this out now so when we get to the fun stuff, you can always refer back to it if you have any confusion about color depth or sampling. So let's start with bit depth. Generally, you see 8-bit and 10-bit on consumer and even pro-level cameras. 12-bit, 14-bit, and 16-bit are usually raw capabilities and are super heavy files. So an 8-bit color depth contains 256 shades of each channel, red, green, and blue. There's a reason it's 256, which I'm not gonna get into, just know that it's 256 shades. If you multiply each channel containing 256 shades, you come up with about 16 million colors. 16 million colors sounds like an awful lot, but even the most minute change creates a new color on the color spectrum. So in the grand scheme of things, 16 million really isn't that much, and you'll see in a second. So let's look at 10-bit now. 10-bit contains 1,024 shades per channel. Multiplying these together, you will get just over 1 billion colors. 1 billion compared to the 16 million of 8-bit. Now you see why 16 million is not a lot of colors. And if we quickly look at 12-bit, there are 4,096 shades in each channel. This equals almost 70 billion shades of color. So as you can see, the higher the bit depth, the more colors your camera can capture. And this usually goes hand in hand with color sampling, which we'll get into right now. So 444, 422, and 420, what are they? First of all, let's talk about your eyes. Your eyes are more sensitive to light or luminance than color. So scientists or camera scientists or whoever figures this stuff out have created a way to minimize file sizes without an extreme degradation in the quality of the image to the eye. So simply put, 444 captures a full color sampling. 422 only captures half of the color that 444 does, and 420 captures only a quarter of the color information. Let's look at this diagram to help explain. This is usually depicted by four pixels across and two rows of sampling per pixel. Let's say we're looking at a 444 image. The first number, 4, is the Luma channel. So it's going to take a sample of the luminance in all four channels in both rows, pretty much all the time, as you see in 444, 422 and 420. The Luma channel is generally always sampled because like I said, our eyes are much more sensitive to light and we would easily notice if you started cutting some of those channels out. The second number, four, is the color in row A. If this number is four, it's gonna sample the red, green, and blue channels in all four pixels. And the same thing goes for the last number, four, in row B. If this number is four, it will capture the red, green, and blue channels in every pixel of row B. So in a 444 image, every channel of every pixel in every row is sampled. Sampled. Now let's look at a 422 image. In a 422 image, as before, every luminance channel is sampled. Now the color in row A, being that it's the number 2, will only sample two of the four pixels, and it will copy every other pixel instead of creating a brand new sampling, which shrinks the file size. Then row B will sample two of the four pixels as well, but it will sample the opposite of the pixel it did in the row above it to spread the image evenly. Then those other pixels will get a copy of the pixel next to it. In a 420 image, again, all four luminance channels are sampled. Then the color in row A is the same as a 422 image where every other pixel is sampled, but then in row B, none of the pixels are sampled. So row B will now get copies of the row above it, kind of making one large pixel over the two pixels in rows, creating much less information for the camera to capture to shrink file sizes, but still have a pleasing effect to the eye. So that's bit depth and color sampling in a nutshell. Color sampling can also be referred to as color subsampling and chroma subsampling, just so you know. I hope that wasn't too hard to understand. It's not so much necessary that you understand how it's captured. Just know that 8-bit, 10-bit, 12-bit, 444, 422, 420, they have their differences and knowing this could really help you choose which camera you wanna use on which project, whether it be a short film, corporate video, or web-based content. Knowing these things can really help your workflow and help you maximize your efficiency while still delivering the best quality for a given project. So if you need to rewatch it real quick, go right ahead. But again, it's not necessarily you know the specifics, just know the concepts. So that's all for this episode of Jersey Filmmaker. If you like this episode, click the like button. Please subscribe and click the little bell so that you can get alerts to all other videos. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below or hit me up on my social medias at Jersey Filmmaker. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.